Welcome to the American Marketing Association's Marketing Power Podcast Series. This podcast is brought to you by Marketing News, the AMA's flagship publication. I'm Elizabeth Sullivan, a staff writer for Marketing News, and today we're speaking with the team behind Cycle for Survival, an annual nonprofit event that raises money for rare cancer research at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. Joining us are Jennifer Goodman Lynn, the event's founder and a marketer by trade, Amy Carpenter, director of fundraising at programs sorry, excuse me, Director of Fundraising Programs at Memorial Sloan Kettering, which owns and operates the event, and Chris Stadler, Senior Director of Marketing at Equinox, the event's founding sponsor and host. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Jen, let's hear about the event itself. What inspired you to create it? Well, I wanted to partner my passion for intercycling with my desire to give back to the doctors at Sloan Kettering who continue to save my life for the past six years. And cycling is very personal to me because it was very therapeutic when I was first diagnosed in 2004 and still is to this day. I go to the gym and some days I only have the energy to cycle for 15 minutes and some days I can do an hour. But when I'm on that bike, I feel like it's me against the disease and every battle signifies, you know, a hump in the road but that I can get through it. So it's very, very inspiring and motivating for me. And I thought, what a great opportunity to use my marketing skills that I attained over the past 15 years for a much-needed cause and also to give friends and family something to do to support me and to sweat for a purpose. That's great. That's great. And tell me a bit about the rare cancer that this uh, money is going to, um, you know, support. Sure. So, So basically, I suffer from a rare cancer called sarcoma, and there are hundreds of cancers that are considered rare in that they don't get the funding or attention from pharmaceutical companies because there just aren't enough people that suffer from them. However, when you group them together, they affect millions of people. So the money that we're raising is focusing on those more rare types of cancers to hopefully find more treatment options so people don't have to live in as much fear. Wonderful. Great cause. Tell me about the event itself. How do you execute the event each year, and how many participants do you attract? Sure. So the event is team-based. It's all about the team. And the reason why we created it that way is because when you're going through a battle, it's all about having a support system. So we purposely said this isn't about individual prowess and achievement. This is about getting a team together. So it's a four-hour relay where teams of two to eight people take turns riding on a bike for four hours. And I jokingly call it the lazy man's triathlon, meaning anyone can do it. It's a great workout, but you also don't need extensive training. And I think it allows people who want to give back to do so easily, whereas a lot of other events, you know, there are marathons or century rides where you really have to train. This is one where, you know, my 90-year-old grandmother can hop on the bike for a few minutes and feel like she's, she's giving back and supporting me. So the event started in 2007, and there were about 50 teams and maybe about 200 individuals participating. And every year we've grown and grown with the help of partners like Equinox and Sloan Kettering. And last year we had about 550 teams and over 3,000 participants. Wow. Wow. So, and what are the results fundraising-wise? Tell me about the money you're bringing in here. Sure. So, so it's exciting. We're one of the fastest-growing charities out there. We've raised close to $5 million to date. Uh, in the early days when the event was just kind of a, a home-brewed idea that I created with um, my husband and some friends, we raised close to $1 million in the first few years, which was a great start. And my husband and I knew we had a promising business model, but we had to partner with the right folks who were really going to help us get exposure and help us, you know, grow the event beyond our wildest dreams. And that's where kind of the powerhouses of Equinox and Sloan Kettering came into play, and they've enabled us to do so much more. And in the past two years, we've raised more than $3.5 million. That's amazing. Wow. So... Chris, obviously it's a great cause, but I'm sure Equinox gets a lot of result, re- requests to host events, you know, with charitable causes. Um, why did you choose to support Cycle for Survival? We really do get a lot of requests, but for us, Cycling for, for Survival is huge, and we couldn't be more honored to be a founding sponsor with Jennifer and Memorial Sloan Kettering to form a very special community. Um, at Equinox, we have extraordinary members with inspirational ideas and stories and Jennifer is at the very, very top of the list. What's nice is that we all share a common purpose to help inspire others. And in this case, it's really making a difference in the fight against rare cancer. We love the idea of leveraging our community to host an indoor team cycling fundraiser and rallying our um, members to help out. Okay. So let's get to the marketing behind this. Chris, how do you promote this event in your gym? It's 
very exciting. We marketed the event to all 100,000 members in our 25 New York City clubs and then also in our four Chicago clubs. So we communicated across multiple touch points. So we had an email campaign. We did in-club signage. Um, but probably most importantly and powerfully was word of mouth. Our entire staff, um, literally every single member of our staff was engaged and helped drive awareness of the event. We also used um, social media to spread the word and tell Jennifer's story to make it for, feel more personal and authentic. One of your colleagues told me it was a grassroots effort. Is that how you describe it? Absolutely. Um, I think it started from the bottom up. And most of our great ideas start from members, so they're often the source of uh, inspiring stories and ideas. Oh, certainly. Amy, how about you? How about the Memorial Sloan Kettering element here? How do you guys promote this to your database? Sure, a couple different ways. Um, to our database specifically, we have millions of people in that, so of course um, we have opportunity to talk to many of them, but what we end up doing is some modeling, so we know what a cycle participant looks like. We do some models and, and overlay that to our database, and then we will end up mailing, gosh, 60,000 or more postcards out to people who are about that right age demographic, um, where do they live, do they have a patient connection, and of course just within our hospital and outpatient facilities which see tens of thousands of people every year. We have signage, we have flyers, our intranet just to get our employees to spread the word to patients and colleagues um, is really important. What's the key to marketing this event, particularly, Amy, among your database? I mean, is, do you do anything specifically to raise awareness that you kind of don't do for other events, or how do you set it apart from your other causes? I think just what Jen hit on, that anyone can do this. You know, we have a marathon program, but that's, you know, you've got to be rather athletic to do a marathon, but for Cycle for Survival, it doesn't matter, you know, the age, generally 30 to 50-year-olds, but it doesn't matter. You can be 18 or 80 and still do it. So the marketing here is really that it's personal. You know, 100% of the money comes directly to Memorial Sloan Kettering, and if you're a patient, you're going to want to participate. Yeah, Jen, you said in an earlier conversation that patients and their families are the best donors. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's really important for us to, to find those patients and seek them out. And what's so nice is that they get just out of, they get just as much out of it as we do. I have so many patients you know, thought coming to me that day and afterwards just thanking me so much for giving them something for their family to unite behind. Uh, and as Amy can tell you, we're making such real progress with the money that we're bringing in that I love getting patients inspired and helping them live without fear that there's going to be more options for us down the road. Let's hear about where this, this money is going. Where, what has it funded so far, Amy? Sure. The great thing, as Jen's probably alluded to many times, is 100% of the funds come directly to Memorial Sloan Kettering. It's turnkey is the, is the term we use here. So the money comes in by the end of January or February, boom, March, April, it's funding projects. So to date, we've um, funded two clinical trials. We funded several research projects at the basic science level, as well as projects in pediatrics, pancreatic cancer, sarcoma. Um, we just found out that part of the 2010 proceeds um, are going to jumpstart four new, new research projects, which are targeted on on therapies and the use of genetics. And then in the next month or so, we'll learn probably about three or four other new projects that are selected. And as Amy said, it really is turnkey, just to give you a very personal example. I was already put on a new chemotherapy regimen as a result of research that was done for the money raised from two years ago. Talk about proof of success mm -hmm. right there. Absolutely. <laughs> very personal. That's amazing. So where do you, I mean, obviously the event, this event has great potential for growth. If you've doubled your, um, you know, fundraising totals, your participants each year, how do you see this growing, Chris? You know, and are you planning on expanding it to other locations? Um, right now we're still in the early stages of development for next year, but I think, you know, the partnership will only continue to grow. You know, we at Equinox we only partner with the best. Um, we couldn't be more honored to host Cycle for Survival and leverage, you know, our exceptional fitness equipment and programming and dedicated members and staff to make a difference in other people's lives. So we're committed, committed to giving 110% to this organization um, and helping our members like Jennifer maximize their life. Wonderful. And not this, this isn't altruistic here, but um, just to be realistic with the marketing angle, it seems like this event is really a marketing triple threat. I mean, you've raised this incredible money for rare cancer research, You've raised, raised Memorial Sloan Kettering's profile as a cancer research hub for those people who aren't yet aware. 
And you're also really promoting Equinox by bringing people in and showing everyone what you guys have, right? I mean, Chris, do you think that this is a fair statement? It is. Um, getting people into our clubs and allowing them to see and experience um, what we have to offer, you know, is, is our best marketing. And if we can do that and also give back to the community at the same time, then that's even more powerful. What about the halo effect for the gym? Just being associated um, with such a good cause. It, I think it speaks to the integrity and uh, our, our dedication to people and uh, our mission to improve people's lives. Right, right. How about, Amy, do you think that it has raised your profile as a cancer research hub? I know you're still, you know, you're operating in New York and now in Chicago and spreading beyond, but and obviously New Yorkers know Memorial Sloan Kettering, but do you think this will help to raise brand awareness? Absolutely, and I think the great thing is it's bringing more and more awareness to rare cancers, which, is, as Jen mentioned, you know, account for about 50% of all cancers. So, Yeah. Is that, I mean, here's cause marketing at its best then, because here you are, you know, promoting this event very effectively, but promoting the cause and really spreading educational awareness. Absolutely. You Correct. know, it's interesting. I think Chris alluded to it before. This is really a perfect partnership because we're all aligned behind the same mission. And I consider both Sloan Kettering and Equinox my homes. I mean, I always say Memorial Sloan Kettering is responsible for my physical well-being over the past six years, and Equinox is very much responsible for my emotional well-being and helping me get out all of my anger through my working out. So both partners are very special to me, and I think we all benefit, and folks who participate see that, and that's why the event is so successful. Right. Well, Jen, you're a consumer marketer by trade, and you've had a lot of experience now with promoting nonprofit events. What's the key here to nonprofit event marketing? You know, it's interesting. I, I get that question a lot. You know, if you could, if you could say, what's the one thing that you've done that's made this event, you know, success, so successful? What is it? And I think, for me, you know, we look at a lot of metrics with Sloan Kettering and Equinox to figure out how we go every year. And the metric I'm most proud of is retention. We get people coming back year after year to participate. And the way we do that is we create a great, unforgettable consumer experience. So people have an amazing day. They tell their friends. So when you couple a great experience with a much-needed cause and you have momentum, the money naturally comes. And I think too often people immediately think about the financials as opposed to thinking about what's the unique experience I'm going to offer that's going to make this the most meaningful, special day of the year for people. And I find that it's the energy and skill of Equinox's amazing cycling instructors, coupled with the passion and the commitment of the doctors who show up in droves and are all riding that day, often on teams with their patients. You know, we get the most beautiful emails back after the event saying it's changed people's lives. And to me, that is the biggest mark of our success and the biggest indication that we are just at the beginning of creating something huge. Do you leverage those messages in any way, the responses you get, the feedback you get from participants? Do you use that in marketing going forward? Absolutely. We use it in, in brochures that we create. We put it on our website. We're doing a lot more social media now, so we encourage people to tell their personal stories to others. And um, we often you know, share it internally with Equinox so that Chris can continue to inspire his staff to stay involved. Is that part then of that perfect formula for um, nonprofit marketing where, I mean, the, the whole dilemma is brand identity and creating awareness that sticks and getting people to come back again and again. So if you're kind of propelling the conversation forward and reminding people of the, you know, the power of this event, you've created success, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful. Well, guys, this has been a really fascinating discussion, and there's more on this in Marketing News. So readers and listeners, if you're interested, check out the issue of Marketing News. Um, but our time is up, and thanks so much for chatting with us, everyone, and thanks for listening in. If you'd like to listen to more AMA podcasts, you can sign up for the RSS feed at marketingpower.com. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you.